welcome back guys to another video and in this video we will be learning how to install arc linux on any pc now the difference with arc linux is there is no installation script uh, and there is no installer software now in many linux uh, famous linux operating systems like ubuntu or fedora you do have an installer software that will give you options and install uh, the operating uh, the operating system uh, based on your requirements so but the arc linux actually uses complete command line uh, manual uh, and the user has to manually input commands for to install the whole operating system so today i'll be showing that uh, in a very easy way in a very simple way uh, it's arc linux's official guide but i'll just be showing what the outputs are and how it's installed so first look let's take a look at my hardware and that is uh, if you guys can see and this is my hardware this is the uh, Jaguar board and it has an Intel Atom and 1 gig of RAM so a very uh, basic hardware nothing fancy uh, one Ethernet port and a pen drive now you can follow this tutorial either uh, via let's say either via SSH like uh, uh, if your uh, hardware is actually in a network and you have another uh, Linux based operating system already installed in another computer and they both are in the same network you can SSH across and install Linux but you can also do it directly on the hardware you want to run uh, Linux into so I will assume you have uh, you do know a few things about uh, basic operating system installation and stuff like that so I'll assume you guys know how to create a bootable pen drive uh, there's no difference in it the Arc Linux gives you an ISO and you will have uh, you have to create a bootable pen drive uh, based on that ISO and of course I will also be assuming uh, that you know a little bit of Linux a little bit of uh, and that you are a little bit aware uh, what happens inside Linux so this is just a guide and let's just uh, see uh, I have already booted uh, the uh, Arc Linux ISO and let's just go ahead and see how that looks like so I'll just switch my monitors here and let you guys have a look now I really hope you guys can see the detail uh, here because Alright, so it looks like you guys might be able to uh, see what's happening on the screen and uh, I have booted into the Arc Linux ISO with a bootable pen drive, uh, EFI boot of course, uh, legacy boot is also supported but I'll be working on EFI uh, and as you can see I have executed a command called if, uh, if config that will give me my current uh, IP address of the uh, hardware on the network so I can SSH into uh, my Arc Linux uh, installation so I'll just uh, get back here and alright so first thing we'll do is I'll let you guys know the from where you can download and that is arclinux.org slash download and this website will give you uh, the ISO so this is the latest ISO 2016.03.01 uh, Arc Linux also doesn't have any uh, incremental uh, upgrades like uh, Ubuntu 14.04 15.04 and uh, so on and so forth Arc Linux just installs on a daily uh, updates on a daily basis uh, there's no versioning or uh, any of that stuff so let's just go ahead and SSH into our machine so that would be SSH uh, root at 192.168.1.6 I think let me that just check that so it seems that SSH is not uh, available and is not 
all right so it looks like uh, we will have to modify the iso installation a bit uh, we have to uh, put in some commands to actually enable uh, ssh so i will clear the screen and the first one would be called passwd so we are giving the uh, root file a password sorry uh, the root user a password so i'll just enter a very simple password uh, so i'll enter ss ss and that's it so my new password is ss and now we what we need to do is actually uh, open up a editor called nano and then we'll go into slash etc slash ssh uh, slash sshd underscore config and that will give us the configuration of file for ssh hmm. now we are, are actually looking for a configuration that actually says i'll get that uh, to the screen all right so you guys can see this is the configuration we are looking for and that is uh, this one right there so it says if you guys can read clearly uh, permit root login and that says yes so that's enabled and we don't have to do anything about it so we can just exit now we can get back to our main screen and start doing some installation stuff okay so it looks like we will have to start the sshdmn uh, on the we forgot to do that and i will uh, i'll just flash the command on the screen and you will just have to follow that command and that is uh, sys y s t e m c t l space s t a r t space s s h d dot service and that should start the s s h service finally and we can so i'm also doing this for the first time uh, i have never installed arc linux before except on the raspberry pi which is just a matter of uh, installing uh, a .img file or actually just copying some files to the SD card. So, first hand experience for everyone. Alright, so again, fresh start, clear, so ssh root at 192.168.1.6 and that should give us ssh now if you're getting this uh, issue now that means you have uh, ssh to that ip address before and it's not matching the uh, security key all you need to do is copy and paste this command and it will uh, sorry yeah remove uh, your old key and then the next time you will ssh it should work and we are into Arc Linux ISO and there we go now we can finally start to install all right first it says if you need to check your into UEFI or legacy bias you need to copy this command which practically shows you if there are uh, any files created under the EFI uh, folder and if you get any output uh, I have I literally have a lot of out output there that means uh, you are actually uh, running on EFI if, the, if that doesn't have any output that means you are running on legacy boot so we'll be following the EFI one and the legacy one is not really all that uh, old so set the keyboard layout now the default console key map is set to US and we leave it as is until or unless you need to use some other kind of keyboard 90% uh, 99% of the keyboards usually are US so we'll leave it there connect to the internet now I I'm already connected to the internet that's why I am able to uh, SSH uh, and so should you to and to just check if you are just ping Google so we'll just ping Google 
and if we receive any package that means we are connected to the internet so we will be skipping that step as well all right uh, it also has an uh, wireless uh, thing here uh, a wireless uh, uh, connection option so you can connect via Wi-Fi that's fine update your system clock so first we'll check if our system clock is up to date it shows it as February 19th uh, UTC uh, that's about right but just in case you need to update your system cl uh, clock then just copy time date CTL and set NTP true and this command will update your system clock just in case and it should uh, right so I forgot today was the 17th of March and not the Feb so yes you need that command to uh, get your system clock right because uh, some websites websites actually don't work that well if your system clock is a bit off due to security reasons and stuff all right so identify devices this is where we actually get into uh, actual installation so lsblk or list block uh, as some would call it this command would show you uh, the drives the uh, storage drives that you have so let's see what all we have there we have uh, a device called SDA so that is not my primary hard drive but my boot disk and I'll let you guys know why because the Jaguar board actually has a mem uh, uh, EMMC card as its primary device so memory block 0 uh, and the MMC BLK0 uh, is uh, my default uh, hard drive uh, on the Jaguar board so this one is uh, the hard drive so this is what we uh, really want to edit uh, in and format in terms of uh, hard drive so uh, if you're running it on a normal system SDA would probably be your primary hard drive but you will really need to uh, check uh, with the double check with the sizes and stuff uh, so I'm just assuming you have a single hard drive so SDA is your primary hard drive and something called uh, I guess uh, SDB or SDC would be your boot uh, your pen drive that you uh, booted from so uh, partition table types uh, is our next uh, part so GPT and MBR if you are using UEFI uh, you will be following GPT and that is very necessary and if you are using MB, uh, legacy boot you need to follow MBR because uh, they both have different type of uh, disk part uh, partitioning schemes uh, alright so using parted in interactive mode uh, creating a new partition table partition schemes so all right all right so the way you do it this is the command to start partitioning your hard drive uh, you write partd space and of course if you start partitioning all your data would be lost uh, that is already on the hard drive I really hope you already know that and do not take a step uh, unknowingly so parted slash dev slash and now the hard drive you want to install uh, all your data into so that would be mmc blk zero that's for me and for you guys it should be uh, sda and that's it you don't need to have the partition number or anything just the device name so we'll press enter and uh, it says of course using dave part uh, mmc blk0 welcome to gnu parted now we will uh, skip all of that and we will come here so it says create a new partition table uh, we are using uh, gpt uefi bias gpt legacy bias mbr so that would be mk label gpt so we'll just space that mk -L -A -B -L -E space gpt and that would uh, create now of course it says the existing disk label on this uh, your, on your partition will be destroyed and all data on this disk will be lost read that carefully think about it and then follow on so 
yes and that will create your power drive now it might have uh, any issues partition on this have been written but we have unable to inform the kernel of the change probably because they are in use as a result the own partitions will remain in use you should reboot now before making any further changes so i will try to reboot and come back and we'll see if that issue is gone or if it just something that stays there and we will change it later so i'll just say cancel and quit and i'll just do it once more and I'll reboot and we'll see what happens so I'm just waiting for it to reboot alright guys so remember if you re reboot your system you'll have to do the whole SSH thing over again because it's a live boot and nothing gets saved alright so we are back the key has changed again this is very annoying and uh, Uh. all right so we are back again uh let's go back to parted and Let's see what happens now. Alright, so that is done. A reboot was needed and it did the stuff. So this is our now. We have uh, our disk as GPT. Now partitioning schemes. Uh, the UEFI system partition must be created separately. So what the if you are using legacy BIOS, what you can do is have a single root directory and your boot and everything including would be in that partition. But EFI partition actually needs a very specific file partition that's FAT32 uh, I guess or VFAT and your Linux system won't run on VFAT so that needs to have a separate partition. So we'll scroll way down, way down and we have our uefi gpt examples and we'll follow this example to make our own so it says uh, mkp part esp fat 32 1 mb uh, 513 mb so uh, i'll explain what it's doing is it is making a fat 32 based uh, efi boot partition which starts from the 1 megabyte block to the 513 megabytes block so that is your, uh, your that is our uh, boot partition so the one we are going to use for EFI so press enter and it will make that next is our second partition which would be our root partition so we'll copy that and we'll paste it this is creating uh, an extended journal so ext4 partition uh, starting from the 513 mb block uh, that ended uh, for our efi partition block and 100 percent that means it will cover the whole disk this is what we are using and I'll press enter and that will create a partition there. Now, you have options to create a separate Linux swap partition. I should have done that and I did not, which is not cool. Hmm. All right, so I should have created a swap partition, but I did not. My bad, I'll quit uh, and I'll start again. So that would lead us back to the very top. So it's my first experience to things happen. There we go. Everything's back to square one. All right. So that 
we will keep our uh, EFI partition as we did next we will create our Linux swap partition and I want to make it of around uh, 1.5 gig so that would be I, uh, I would start from 513 uh, MIB and I will go till uh, 2 gig so that is a uh, one and a half gig of uh, Linux swap partition and that's that next I will make the primary partition and that would be ext4 uh, my this is my Linux partition so this will be from 2 gig to the whole so it's around 16 gig 14 gig usable and all that stuff uh, and that is cannot end before the start Oh, okay, sorry, a uh, hundred part percent, right? So that makes us, uh, the, that makes our uh, main partition. So there are many examples. Uh, if you were, guys want to see, so this is the bias and MBR example. I'm not going to follow that. Uh, mostly the same uh, in bias. Uh, if you're using a normal legacy bias, you can use a single partition for everything. That would be fine. So we'll exit that, uh, quit and we will lspl, okay let's see if, alright so this is our new partition table. So MMC BLK 0, P1, P2 and P3. So 512 MB uh, P1. Uh, uh, P2 is 1.5 gig this is our swap and uh, P3 is our 12.6 gig so this is what we will be using next we need to format each of these manually so lsblk div x this will give us uh, this will give us a little bit more comprehensive Okay, oh, right. So Dave MMC B L K zero, right? And this will give us the same thing. It's not, not much. All right. So first we will format our fat partition. Paste that. So M K F S fat uh, fat and then fat type is fat thirty two, and that would be. MMC BLK0 and you can see P1 P1 so that will give us a 512 MB uh, FAT32 partition press enter and it made that simple as that now next for our uh, ext4 partition uh, that would be MMC BLK P3 so that's our third partition uh, ext4 and we'll press enter what mmk blk 0 p3 oh my bad and that is actually that will take time uh, at, at least not that much so that they did that and and then we need to make uh, also format our swap partition so that would be mmc blk 0 p Two. that is our 1.5 gig swap partition and that then uh, that and to enable our swap partition uh, we will just uh, enter swap on so that will turn on the swap so swap on and then the device name press enter and the swap starts working all right so our uh, stuff has been set up not actually stuff but uh, our hard drives have been set up and just to see if the camera is not it. okay so mount we have to mount some more stuff now we mount our root partition 
that would be our MMC BLK P3, C BLK0 P3 at slash mount. So that would be mounted at the place where we can access it, use it, install files and stuff like that. Enter. That's it. Mounted. And if you are running EFI, you will also need to uh, mount the boot partition. Create a new directory. So mkdir slash p will create a new directory at mnt slash boot. So inside the mnt we create a boot directory. That's done. And now we will be uh, mounting our uh, EFI partition there. So that would be mmc blk 0 p1. And that gets mounted there. Installation. Now in begins our main installation, getting all the files and doing all that stuff. So packages to be installed must be done from the server, which are defined at blah blah blah. And so they are already defined. And this is uh, to install the base packages. Very basic stuff. Uh, nothing much. and i will explain what happens so the file manager is pacman and packstrap is actually a bootstrap kind of file manager thing uh, go away mosquito from my camera and packstrap slash i dash i uh, which ensures prompting before package installation so that means it won't automatically install everything you'll have to select yes may probably just once so add dash mount our root partition for our new installation base is the uh, base packages a very basic amount of packages so we want to keep our system light so base packages and base devil would be development packages for the same stuff so press enter and it should start doing its stuff so of course you need to be connected to the internet for this to happen and what it's doing is it's actually synchronizing uh, the database packages over the internet onto slash mnt and installing stuff there all right so this is where the i comes in there are 50 members in the group base so these are all the basic uh, groups you will be installing bash bzip core utils and blah 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 of course the uh, linux kernel and stuff like that very basic stuff thank god there is nano there is vi also but nano is fine and default is all of course we'll go with the default and just type in all just to be sure and press enter okay invalid all okay so we are just going to press enter and there are 25 more in the base devil packages we need all of them just press enter total download size is 222 and total install size is 752 mb good stuff very light on the ram so it's actually the whole os is actually smaller than the ram on the uh, board that is really great and we'll just select y and press enter it will start to receive the packages it will take time depending how fast your internet is i will come back once this is done because i am running out of memory on my phone which i am recording the audio with so i'll be back and you guys enjoy till then thanks just a second there right all right so we have uh, finished our backstrap uh, step and it installed a bunch of stuff and everything has been uh, installed successfully and now let's go ahead and uh, go to the configuration uh, step and this is uh, we will be generating the f step uh, file now this is actually used to uh, detect and to uh, mount drives uh, while the linux kernel is booting so that everything is properly set up that is what the f stab file is for it has the data uh, regarding your drives and where they are to be mounted 
so we'll just do that and it will probably copy uh, the one that we already have or generate a new one now change root so ch root is a way to kind of uh, virtually emulate another linux uh, uh, environment that is already on your uh, system but what it actually does is actually uh, changes your uh, root directory to the one you want to go that is slash mount in our case that is our current uh, the one that we recently installed if it's a lot too uh, a bit too confusing for you, you can actually go and read up uh, an article on ch root uh, on wikipedia and that should give us uh, uh, stuff to work on so root at arc iso and now this is our new root so we are at slash mount all right so locale defines which language the system uses so i think uh, What we need to do is edit the file uh, etc slash local.gen so nano control shift v and enter so we'll just go ahead and uncomment uh, this one so that is uh, where did that go yeah N US UTF eight and UTF eight. So um we can uncomment other languages as well, but uh I guess this one should be more than enough. And uh, for the and if we really require some other uh languages we can do this uh, anytime and there's no restriction on it. So just making sure I have uh, uncommented the correct one and that is nus.utf8 uh, control x y and enter now locale gen that will generate a locale lo locale local uh, language and what that stuff permission denied okay Oh, okay. So, all right. Now it is. Uh, what I actually did was I did not paste the command. I pasted a file, and that led to uh, some error. And it should work well enough. Uh, no doubt about that. Set the keyboard layout. Now, I am not too sure if you really need to do this but uh, we'll just check what our current keyboard layout is and that will be from the file vcconsole.conf and it does not really say uh, anything so I guess we need to uh, create our keyboard layout and Alright, so I just checked and the default key map uh, console key map is set to the US. Uh, I did forget about it, it was already there. And it looks like we don't really have to do anything about this. Time zone select. So the time zone is set to UTC by default. And uh, we'll uh, leave it that way, it doesn't make a uh, much of a difference uh, we can change it later on but uh, let's just leave that and move on because we will need to have the zone info and zone and sub zone that uh, you guys can figure out on your own uh, next step is init trams fs
and we need to uh, regenerate that so we will just copy this command and paste this uh, even I will need to read up on what it actually does but uh, I think it uh, creates some configuration kind of a uh, file uh, for the Linux kernel but uh, it was already done uh, I guess I did see uh, this kind of a uh, output while uh, Pacman was actually installing the Linux image at uh, dash mount at our slash mount uh, root directory and now comes the interesting part of installing a bootloader now for UEFI and GPT partition uh, here the installation drive is assumed to be GPT partitioned and have the EFI file system partitioning it does uh, formatted with FAT32 install system uh, the boot to EFI system partition with this command uh, alright so this should install our uh, boot files let's select enter uh -huh. ok I have no idea why it's doing that but okay so it seems that we missed a step uh, back at the installing uh, the partition type uh, stuff and we need to do that so we are going to use parted again so P-A-R-T-E-D uh, mmcblk0 ok so we need to exit the chmod uh, we need to exit uh, the ch root and then parted mmcblk0 and then ok alright so we are here and we will set partition boot on expecting a partition number so mmc on partition 1 so set one boot on that can be done set one boot on that is what we missed and that happened that is now done okay we can get back so the step we missed was set boot uh, one set first set one boot on so that makes our uh, ESP partition bootable so let's get back to the ch root and we can do boot install and it successfully installs the boot image nice okay boot uh, is installed create uh, a boot entry as described in here okay let's see if there is a default entry already and it says uh, default so I am guessing that it will automatically take the default alright so uh, got the stuff that I needed and the configuration uh, will uh, select this as arc so default goes to arch 
time out is uh, three let's make it five time out would be five and editor is zero so now we have set default to arc so that means uh, we can control Z here and now we need to create a entry for arc.conf so we go to cd slash entries uh, let's see if there is already a conf no so we nano and arch dot conf and that uh, should help us create our boot entry so we'll go uh, what we have here and before that we actually need to have the UUIDs for our partition so before we do that lsplk it won't give us our UUID uh, so UUID Alright, so this will give us uh, our UUID so for uh, EFI only. So this is for the GPT partition. So we need to copy the UUID is in blue. So we need to copy the UUID here and we will copy and just randomly paste it somewhere where we can store it. So I have pasted it here and uh, let's get back to our ch mode uh, uh, ch root environment and uh, let's go to cd sorry uh, cd slash boot uh, where were we uh, yeah cd slash boot slash loader slash entries well, is it not typing cd slash boot slash loader slash entries and slash arc dot conf uh, no so that and now we'll go nano arc dot conf and that would be our arc linux configuration so T-I-T-L-E title would be Arc Linux. Uh, Linux would be uh, where we uh, what is the kernel and that would be VMZ dash Linux. And let's paste that and then init RD. Uh, so the one that we just created a few minutes back and then uh, further options options and this so now we want to uh, remove this uh, remove this UUID and copy uh, our own so this is our UUID and this should work now and hmm. so control X Y and save okay so that was something new uh, host name if you really need to change the host name uh, you can so I'll just show you guys CD uh, sorry nano and etc uh, slash host name and I will just see Jaguar and that is my new host name wide connection 
uh, okay so if config okay so you need to make sure what uh, device are you running on and it seems to be this one usually it's ETH 0 or something like that but uh, I have no idea what uh, kind of hardware is on the Jaguar board for the network and I will use I think it should automatically take uh, the internet so I'll just leave it as is and unmount the file partitions of course we have to set uh, we have to go back into ch root and set the password so passwd that would be ss and ss type any password that you want and let's exit the environment again oh, we are done with that unmount r and mount so that would unmount both the partitions and that's done and then uh, we can reboot now before I type reboot uh, I want to get the camera on uh, the screen so I can show you guys how it's booting so I'll be back with that all right so my camera is recording and I'll just turn off the monitor and reboot the Jaguar board and the Jaguar board has uh, rebooted and I will for now let my pen drive be go to boot and boot from Linux boot manager and save and exit and press enter uh, and it should probably work now yes so it is at the uh, login console so Jaguar it says if you guys oh it's all out of focus okay I guess now you guys can clearly see that it says Jaguar login and so Arc Linux 4.4.5 that's the kernel and Jaguar login so I'm login as root and the, the password and I am in uh, proper Arc Linux installation so you name uh, and you name so there we go it's go it's probably a very long video but that is the how you installed how you are supposed to install an Arc Linux uh, OS and we will do more stuff with it probably add some graphical user interface uh, first of all and then do uh, something else so there you go guys thanks thank you so much for watching and I really hope this was helpful for you it's a long procedure but you actually get a very solid uh, custom Linux installation uh, and SYU what what so it's possible that our internet is not working for some reason okay that's all then okay so it seems that we should have configured the internet so do not forget to follow that step 
and I think I will be confirming it from uh, the installation itself. Okay, then thanks for watching, guys. Anyways, and I will see you next time.